Hey everyone, Dr. Keith here. Let's continue by learning SQL. So hopefully you've read a little bit of the intro of this chapter. You've watched our Karate Kid video, gotten really motivated. Time to put all of your hard work on ERDs to good use. Uh, you're probably not going to be the person who creates these databases, but you are very likely to be the person, no matter what your major is in the business school, who will pull the database to pull the data out and use it to make some type of managerial decision. So let's learn how to write SQL statements that pull data out of a database. Great thing is, is SQL is fairly standard across all SQL based databases. Uh, IBM databases, Microsoft databases, Oracle databases, they're all SQL based and this language is going to work on all of them. So let's begin. We're going to use access to do this uh, simply because it's something that I know uh, we all have access to for free in this course. Well, most people do. Or at a minimum, it's easy to get if you can buy Microsoft Office and you don't have, it's not a huge installation cost. So even though it's uh, not a big database management system, it will let us write SQL just fine uh, and be very useful. So let's start with number one here. I'm going to spend a bit more time on this one and give more detailed explanation. Uh, and then the rest of these I'm going to go a bit quicker through. So I've already downloaded the Gold Star HR database. You should hopefully remember this from the first chapter. We did that exercise where we pulled uh, the data apart in Excel into separate related tables. Then later on, we pulled it into Access. We created um, uh, the relationships and the relationships window. Hopefully you remember all that. Anyway, I'm going to copy this and go ahead and go into Access. Let's take a look at it. OK, um, hopefully you remember we have these tables in Access. I always start by making sure I look at and understand the data first. All right, so we have our employee table with a couple of foreign keys leading to a couple of other tables. That all looks good. Employees, uh, locations, positions. All right, good enough for me. Let's get started here. Let's create query design. I'm going to close this out. We're not going to learn this design view in this chapter. Uh, the next chapter covers this. I think it's less important and less useful to use this design view because the design view is quite a bit different in different database management systems, but SQL's 99% the same. So let's start by learning SQL. All right, write a statement that will return all employee names first and last only. Well, first of all, where is this going to come from? So we have an employee table with first and last names here. Why don't we just look at them here? Well, uh, we call the tables the physical views of the database. There's only one physical view, and that means this is the actual data being stored. Queries are what we call a logical view. And all that we store for queries is a little bit of SQL code. And it gives us a view of a table or a combined view across multiple tables, which is useful. Sometimes we want just a little bit of information. We don't want to run a big query if we have millions of records. We don't want to pull everything out if we don't need it, because that will take time and cost resources and slow down our other systems. So we write queries to give us just what we need when we need it with no wasted uh, resources. Anyway, let's go ahead and write this. I'm going to start with the keyword select. All right, this is part of the, the SQL language. I put it all in caps, not because I have to, but because it helps me separate terms and words that are part of the SQL language from names that are used to identify fields, tables, and stuff like that. So select, it says, what do you want to select? Well, I use select to, to pick which fields I want or columns. Well, where do I get first and last name? I got to get the exact names of those fields. So I open employee and I see, ah, it's called last name, no spaces, first name, no spaces. Great. I have to make sure I get the exact spelling right or it won't work. So I'm going to put first name, comma, last name. We list each field with a comma after it, except for the last field. We don't need this one. So we always return the fields in the order they're asked for in the request. All right. Select first name, last name. Those are the only two fields we want. Then the next keyword is from. Now I put from down here on a separate line. Do I have to? No. Because white space is ignored in SQL, I could put it all on the same line like this. But it makes it easier to read, so I'll put it down here. From means which table is going to have these fields. Well, we pulled it. We looked at them from the employee table. So all I got to do is put the name of the table, employee. And then my, uh, actually, I'm, I don't need where for this one. We'll come back to that in the next one. It doesn't tell me to sort them alphabetically, so I'm not going to do it. It doesn't tell me that I only want certain employees, so I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to leave it just like this, move it up to the top, and then I'm going to run that query. I can use this Run button right here to do it, or I can just simply change it to Datasheet View. I'll hit Run, 
and take a look what happens. So it gives me first name, last name, just the things I asked for. Now, what order did it decide to return them in since I didn't specify to sort them? I'll open up the employee table. And you'll notice that it returned them in the exact order they showed up in. Notice I can ask for the fields in any order I want, even though that's not the order they appear in in the actual table, it doesn't matter. All right, so that's it, my first query. All it is, so go back to SQL view, is select first name and last name. We always put field names separated by commas after the word select, table name after the word from. This is our easiest one. Let's save this guy right here. Query one, okay. Notice now here's my tables, my physical views, and now it's gonna make a list of queries, my logical views. Now when I run this again, it looks like I have all this data but the great thing about queries is that the only thing that's actually being saved in this query, it hasn't made a copy of that data. The only thing that's being saved is this little teeny bit of code right here. So queries take up very little space to store. We can have as many of them as we want. All right, that query is done. Well, let's move on to the next one.